kind of wrap your head around how it works. Okay, so the stair tool is underneath um, architecture and stair. And the default stair is a 7-Eleven. Okay, uh, and the default stair, a 7-Eleven stair, let's call it what it is, a 7-Eleven stair sucks. You do it only um, for utility reasons, um, maybe a fire stair, but a stair that does not have a lot of circulation to it. That is the maximum um, rise and the minimum run for a commercial <coughs> building that code allows. Uh, and it's too steep, right? Olin Library, the stair in there, that is a 7-Eleven stair, and it's it's no good. It's no, I, it, it's it's exhausting to go up and down. It's, it's really not designed well for humans. The stair in our lobby here in HSA is a 612 or a little bit less even. Super comfortable stair. Everybody hangs out on it all the time. Nobody avoids it and goes to the elevator. Most people don't avoid it and go to the elevator anyway. Um, it is a better stair. So that's the first thing I always show you guys how to do is drop this from a 711 to 612. So what I'm going to do is go to edit type. I'm going to duplicate this stair because we do need to keep the 7-Eleven, and I'm just going to name it 612 stair. Um, I'm going to change the maximum riser height to six inches, the minimum tread depth to one foot, and then again, the default run is three, um, which is actually breaks code. Um, so uh, while they set up the, the maximum height and the minimum depth, um, on the stair, they act at, to code. They actually a three O stair is too narrow. It, it will not in any building ever meet code for minimum width. Also, think about let's go uh, around campus as well. Springfield Hall, that is a three O stair in its width, uh, and you have to wait for somebody to come down while you go up. Right? It's it's a really creepy, terrible stair that you would know a lot better if we had the computers class in Springfield Hall like we used to. Right? Um, you probably never visit Springfield Hall. But go visit Springfield Hall sometime and try and go up and down the stair. It's really annoying. It's like trying to squeeze through a doorway with somebody else, like at the same time. Like you never do that, right? So 3 0, way, way, way too small. Um, a better width really is five. Um, so, to my opinion, it's way off on what they're calling a minimum for that. 5 0 is a much better width for a stair. Um, it does get more complicated than that uh, on this list, obviously. You can start doing, um, it, it, are the supports open or closed? What happens underneath it? All that kind of stuff. Um, how it divides up, because again, it's not going to automate. It's not going to default to 612. So in other words, it will do um, five and three quarters of an inch if that's what it requires to have the steps even from level to level. Okay, because what you never do on a stair, ever, never, ever do, is like six inches, six inches, six inches, six inches, four inches. That's how you break somebody's neck. Um, you, we've all done it. We've all gone down a stair and thought there was one more step, right? Um, or thought you were at the last step and you kind of get that weird stair thing happen. Um, stairs are all about rhythm and time for us as human, right? As we go up and down the stairs, da 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 And when somebody throws a kink in one of those, da 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 kink, yeah, it's not good. It's not pretty. It always seems bad. So they're always the exact same dimension. Revit takes care of that for you, okay? And that's in the calculation rules. I never mess with them. I leave them to the, to the default. It, it does a really good job with that. So I've got a 612 stair, six inches, one foot, five feet wide. It is running from level one to level two by default, okay? Pretty simple, and you can adjust those things as you go along. Um, this method is the run method that we're using, and it is as simple as drawing in your path. And as you're drawing, you're going to see the number of rises, cre risers created and the number remaining. So if I wanted a U-shaped stair, I would go uh, a U-shaped and even, U-shaped symmetrical, I guess is what I would call it, maybe. That's the right term. Um, I would go up to 10 created, 10 remaining, and left click. And then I would come over approximately five feet, and do the next one, and you get that. Green jackie box, and it's pretty cool, stairs done. Um, well, it's not done. Um, another thing that Revit does really weird, uh, I hope you're listening, Revit people. Um, this uh, handrail also breaks code, um, which is, again, really weird. Um, I, I understand that, they, that code is on us as designers, but you would think that the default would at least be to code. Um, they do have one that is to code, 
in here. So one of the first things you need to do, select both of those and switch this to um, either the guardrail pipe or guardrail rectangular. Uh, again, a guardrail, the difference between a handrail and a guardrail, a guardrail is 42 inches, which anytime we're above three feet, I think that it might be 30 inches. I need to look that up actually. Um, but anytime you're above something around that three foot mark, you have to have a 42 inch high rail. At that point, then you also have to have a, a handrail, which is located 36 inches above the floor that you're standing on. Okay, so it needs both of those things. Um, for me, the, the verticals, that one's pretty ugly. Um, the one I usually switch it to is guardrail pipe. It just looks a little better. Um, you can come in and just define your own um, guardrail system. Or the other thing that I'll often do in my Revit files, because I'm not a huge fan of either one of those, is I will come back in and use a wall over the top of them with a only a handrail on the inside. Uh, it just depends on how I'm trying to design the stair. So that is a 612 stair with um, the correct handrail on each side. Um, usually I really drive this point home, um, but we don't have a lot of time, so I'm just going to quickly show you. Um, the other thing that needs to happen with your stairs, um, professionally speaking, I don't know that we really ever touch this in school, is uh, the handrail extensions, handrail and guardrail extensions that we are required to do by code. Um, and so to edit those really quickly, I'm just going to go to edit path. So I've got my uh, guardrail selected and I went to edit path. And that essentially gives us like Revit does with everything back down to the purple line. Okay, to build the extension required by code, I need to extend out one foot while still at slope. So I'm just making a little guide and I'm going to drag that out one foot. And then it needs to go one foot flat. So I'm drawing an additional line. So this one is a line by itself. This one, I simply stretched out the guardrail that I had. Um, and for handrails or guardrails, they have to be connected together. I can't have a rogue line over here because, um, again, it's not a closed loop or a closed line. Um, so it can't do the calculations. So all those things have to connect up, but I can do two lines end to end. I green checky box that and I end up with the correct extension at the bottom and top. Well, I mean, that's just at the bottom. Do the same thing at the top. Cool? So if I have a residential stair, um, like the unnamed project that we're working on, because I don't want to throw anybody under the bus, that is not to code that you are trying to replicate, which you should never design on your own, right? I can come into my edit type and duplicate, and I can do like a 12... 12 stair, which is now at 45 degrees. Um, I can make my riser height one foot, my minimum tread depth one foot, and I can make the stair two feet wide, right? So it's going to do that for me. It really doesn't care. It is not in charge of keeping you in code. Um, that would uh, introduce all kinds of liability to Autodesk. They're not, they're not going to ever do that for us. Okay, so okay. I can draw the stair in. Wait a minute. I didn't get the... Um, Run width correct. At the top. So, um, Okie dokie. That's a new one on me. Uh, so run. Oh, actual run width. Oh, that's interesting. Fun. I, I, did, I had no idea. Thanks, Mary. So yeah, so that's two feet wide. Ten risers created. That is darned near a ladder but it'll do it, right? So it'll do whatever I tell it to, okay? So that's those are your the, the fast method of making stairs, and that is the run method, but it's only a straight stair, okay? So I'm going to go to the other method of making a stair. We can be a little bit more freeform. I'm going to switch this back to a 612. Let's go back to our level one floor plan, and this time I'm going to use the sketch method, okay? So the sketch method um, has two key components, the risers and the boundaries, okay? The boundary is not the boundary on what would essentially be all four sides of your steps. It's your two edges, right? So I can create a boundary, like a straight line and a curved line, 
oops, an independent curved line. Like that. And let's give it just a little bit more room. Okay, so those are my boundaries. I do not need a top and bottom. Okay, um, those are the only two elements I need are the sides. After I have my boundaries in place, I can go to rise. So on the risers, I'm just going to start um, down here. I'm going to make sure that my line is perpendicular, right? So I'm using my object snap to be perpendicular. And I'm just going to extend this out past my boundary edge. The boundary is going to act like a crop, okay? Um, I don't need to keep everything within that. Um, so at this point, all I need to do is an offset um, because I know my steps are going to be 12 inches or my treads are going to be 12 inches. And you can see I've got a countdown right here, seven risers created, 13 remaining. So it's running the calculations while you do this. Let's keep going, seven. Um, so this is one very long stair. So this is close to breaking code, but not quite. Um, I believe the maximum rise that you can do without a landing is 12 feet, but it's really uncomfortable. So I really should have designed a landing in this someplace. But essentially I have something like that, okay? I've got a boundary, a boundary, and then I have my risers running across those. When I green checky box that, it crops everything according to the boundary and generates that stair with a curve in it. Okay, from there, um, I can put uh, guardrails on top of that, um, just like I would anything else, um, and build away. Cool, that's it, y'all. That's, that's how the stair tool works. So you can pretty much do whatever you want to with it. When in doubt, often on my Revit mile models, uh, especially early on, I will actually model the stairs with a generic component as well. Um, and just sort of draw them in section, right? And sweep it out um, simply so that I actually have something I can 3D print in terms of physical model as well. Um, I know everybody in the room has probably at some point tried to hand model stairs. Um, not so much fun, right? 3D printing, um, I can isolate that, print it, um, works super easy, super fast and helps, helps us work with the robots. Yay, go robots. Cool. That's it, you guys. Um, let's stop this thing.